Grand Prix has just started. And they are rushing into the first corner. That is Crowthorne. And just watch them swing round Crowthorne. And the leader was Takazumi Katayama from Japan on one of the many Hondas. In fact, four Hondas qualified in the top six. There are four Americans in the top eight in this first ever 500cc South African Grand Prix here at the Kyle Army Racetrack. Famous, of course, for car racing, and it is Takazumi Katayama in the lead. Marco Lucanelli, number five, coming down the inside. Marco doesn't quite make it. Barry Sheen, we're looking for Barry. We didn't see exactly where Barry pushed off, but... No, I can't see Barry. And uh, in the lead, Honda. Just look at them. One, two, three, four Hondas in the lead. Kenny Roberts made a pretty poor start. We thought the Yamahas would be difficult to start. And Takazumi Katayama on the first lap. There is number eight. Now that West Bank corner used to be called Leacop. Very, very tricky corner. 30 laps to go. 45 minutes of racing and in second place Freddie Spencer now but it looks as if yes it looks to me as if the Hondas are in the first four positions as they come down to the end of the first lap Ron Haslam remember is number nine look out for that number nine how is Ron Haslam faring he's in that group four Hondas in the first four places this is absolutely sensational Honda have spared absolutely no money in this race and Freddie Spencer took the lead there is from Shreveport, Louisiana, leading this quartet of Hondas with Randy Momoa in fifth place. Barry Sheen, I'm told he's 17th, Barry Sheen down the field in 17th position. Chris Guy from Devon had a good, uh, had a very good practice. And Ron Haslam now in third place. With me in the commentary position, Peter Clifford, the technical editor of Motorcycle Weekly, has raced around this track on a number of occasions. Peter, what about Freddie's tactics and what about this sensational Honda Quartet going straight out into that lead? An absolutely incredible start and there's no stopping Freddie Spencer. He's already started to open up a lead over Takazumi Katayama, Ron Haslam and the fourth placeman Marco Lucanelli. There's uh, just nothing to stop the Hondas. I see Randy Momoa up into fifth place on the Suzuki. Suzuki had a pretty poor practice time and Randy will have no chance if he lets uh, Freddie get away here. Oh well, Honda have really put every effort into their Grand Prix team this year. Let me tell you, there are 40 Honda technicians here. There is a special porter cabin with computer links back to Japan. There are nasty-looking gentlemen with Alsatian dogs who threw me out of the pit. That's how secret they are keeping this race, or their race. Uh, it's rather different than the Suzuki pit, I might tell you. But Honda have eight bikes they have from these four riders to choose from and four of those eight bikes are in positions one two three and four and fifth is randy mamola sixth franco and chini the world champion well past freddie spencer and ron hasman just took second place then i think ron was through to second no he isn't well a lot of jockeying of positions and randy trying hard in the down the inside then to try and break up that honda quartet Kazumi Katayama. Trying to see where Barry Sheen is. We think Barry Sheen is still around about 15th position. Tremendous atmosphere here. No, Barry is 16th, I'm told. Takazumi. There's Ron. Ron Haslam. And then Marco Lucanelli. And we have Randy. Randy Mamola. We've seen him many times on World of Sport in Britain. But just look at Freddie Spencer, fast Freddie living up to the PR men's nickname. 21-year-old from Shreveport, Louisiana, has really turned on the gas. It's been quite a couple of weeks for him. Last week he won a run, taking second place, is he? No! He lets Katayama go. Ron having to think about going down the inside, the bike's moving around a little bit. Randy is uh, there in the... Fifth place behind the four Hondas. Well, what a sensational start for fast Freddie Spencer Barry Sheen on the end of the third lap in 16th place. So Barry playing himself in easily. But you'd rather hope for rain. Fast Freddie Spencer got officially engaged last week at Daytona. 
to uh, the uh, reigning mystery fort and uh, won the Bell 100 mile superbike race two. Peter Clifford. Well, I think the problem is here that uh, Fast Freddie Spencer's getting away and in fact the other three Honda guys are holding each other up. Ron desperately wants to get past Takazumi and set his sights on the American in front, but Takazumi's sticking to his task. Uh, Ron is going to see Freddie disappear over her, uh, the horizon if he can't get past the Japanese very quickly. Yes, Takazumi has got a reputation as a fast starter and then uh, tends to slow up a little bit. Eddie Lawson, who was fastest through much of practice on the second of the Marlboro Yamahas, very slow away in this uh, Nashua Grand Prix. Kenny Roberts uh, in eighth position. We thought the uh, B4 Yamahas would be difficult to start and indeed they are. So fast Freddie Spencer making a sensational early lap running here at Kyle Army. Good battles for second place. Fast Freddie's made his Grand Prix debut last year. Won two Grand Prix. Looks like he was going to win a, a couple more. His very first Grand Prix win we saw on World of Sport. Uh, it was at Spa and if you remember he fell off the bike at the end of the race. They see Katayama with Ron Haslam hanging his knee out. Ron Haslam really trying hard and Randy Mamola moving up Randy Mamola has moved up to fourth Eddie Lawson going very quickly through the uh, back markers through the pack up his slow start Eddie Lawson is up to 15th position and he's a man to watch but there is Randy Mamola behind Ron and there you see Kenny Roberts the uh, new all red color scheme of Kenny Roberts somebody said he looked a bit like Father Christmas in that get up King Kenny, definitely his last season, he says, of uh, Grand Prix racing, possibly his last season altogether. They come up to West Bank corner. Remember, Freddie Spencer is leading, Katayama is second, Ron Haslam is in third place, then Randy Bonoda, then it looks as if Kenny Roberts have moved up one. A couple of places back, I just caught the back of Franco and Cini, the uh, reigning world champion on the Suzuki. Suzuki have had a lot of handling problems, but just look how Ron is slipstreaming. Peter, tell us about this slipstreaming down that main street. It's going to be very vital, isn't it? Yes, it's a mile-long straight here at Kyle Army, so Slipstream plays a big part. The leading motorcycle punches a great hole in the air, allowing the following motorcycle an easy passage to tuck in behind. Ron didn't succeed in getting past Takazumi there. The bike's obviously very evenly matched, but he's going to try around the back section, and uh, maybe he'll bide his time until he gets back onto the straight again so he can get a slingshot past the man in front of him. And yes, he's done it, in fact, just as Peter handed the mic back to me. Ron Haslam snapped into second place, put on the power of that three-cylinder, two-stroke engine, perhaps 135 brake horsepower going through that seven-inch back wheel. Really difficult to control. And look at Ron now, knee-out style. And it looks as if Roberts was moving up. Let's watch for Roberts. Kenny Roberts is up to fourth place. King Kenny does not wish his reign to end without a victory at the last year of his World Championship Challenge. Kenny, remember, won it three times. Two years ago, he lost the title to Marco Lucinelli. Last year, Franco and Cini took the title. Kenny's last year, he desperately wants to take it back. And I see him as the, as the man who is most likely to come through. Good news for British fans. Barry Sheen is now up to 14th. This is lap number six. Kenny Roberts on the red and white Yamaha. Yamaha is a V4. The Suzuki is a square four. The Honda is a three-cylinder. And just look at that lead that Freddie Spencer's pulled out. Looked like about three seconds, and Katayama has got back to second place. Ron Haslam is third. What for Kenny Roberts? Well, in practice, they all, the top six riders, all lapped within the second of each other. We thought this was going to be a cracker. We did not expect Freddie Spencer to pull out that early lead, but all these second men are making up for it, and Kenny Roberts will be getting all the pit signals from Kel Carruthers and Nobby Clark in the Yamaha pit, and they'll be telling him just how far ahead, not these men are, but how far ahead Freddie Spencer is. Kenny told me just before the race started that um, he knew his motorcycle had about 10 miles an hour in top speed over the Hondas, but the big problem in practice was that as the motorcycle got hot, the power decreased. Now, it's a steaming hot day here at Kyle Army, so Kenny's big worry is going to be that though the bike may be fast now, he's got to make his move and get to the front before the temperature of the engine increases, the power drops off, and he loses speed. Well, he's certainly trying that. Just look here, he's trying to sweep round Katayama. Now he goes to the inside. Has he got it yet? Now can Kenny have a go at Ron Haslam? Kenny won't 
probably wondering who is this guy in front of me this British guy Ron from Langley Mill in Knox still lives with his mum one of ten children great character around the race circuits and just look at the speed there on the Honda now I wonder if Kenny has started to slow up that was absolutely sensational that was slip streaming at his very best and there is Katayama Katayama is now second Ron Haslam is third fourth is Kenny Roberts Randy Romola is fifth Big surprise, uh, Raymond Ross is sixth on a Honda. Marco Lucanelli seventh, then Franco Incini. Those positions are a little out of date. There's fast action in the South African Grand Prix. And don't expect the, uh, the caption writers to uh, keep up with that. As you saw Ron Haslam go through as I was talking. Ron Haslam back in second place. They don't call him Rocket Ron for nothing. So the Langley Mill Flyer on his first full season of Grand Prix racing and he gets a bit of a twitch on. Ron in his early career when he used to ride a Yamaha 750 for Mal Carter did fall off quite a lot but he's uh, really now a much steadier rider if this can be counted as steady. Barry Sheen reminding you is in 14th. And there is Kenny Roberts and Kenny is uh, just out one out of our picture got back into third place now he's having another snap at Rod. Seems that Kenny is quicker down the uh, twisty bits of the circuit, but uh, the Honda seemed much faster down the straight. Let's watch this time. Peter Clifford, take us through it. Well, Kenny's tucked in right behind Ron Haslam here, using the slipstream, but Kenny's got a problem that if he uses the slipstream, allows the front motorcycle to push the air away, the air won't pass through his radiator, and it's not going to cool the engine, but he's made use of it this time because he's pulled out of the slipstream at exactly the right moment, got on the brakes at the last second and dived into second place. But yes, he did get into second place. He held second place. Katayama came to third. Ron Haslam was demoted to fourth. We're looking at that picture and see if we can see Barry Sheen. I think we just caught a glimpse of Barry Sheen in about 14th position. He said he'd be happy with the top 10 position. Well, that's going to his schedule at the moment. There is Ron and Katayama side by side. Ron just sweeps inside the Japanese former pop singer, might I tell you. But Kenny Roberts is uh, past those two Hondas. Randy Mamola is behind them. So Americans first and second a Britain in third place a Japanese rider in fourth place and another American in fifth well King Kenny from Modesto California lives right in the uh, wine growing area if you enjoyed those Californian wines well that's where Kenny lives he enjoys them too but obviously in moderation and King, King Kenny's coming up to West Bank corner with Ron Hatton behind him Sakazumi Katayama before him Barry Sheen has moved up to 13th spot. He started 13th, so he has now moved up to the spot in which he started. Barry Sheen having a little bit of a charge at the back. But let's face it, we're used to seeing Barry out in, in the front of these races. He had a tremendous season last year. A whole string of second and third places before that accident. But let's, the man should be on crutches. He really should. And to just look at him in, in the pits when he was wearing his shorts, earlier, you can hardly see the scar marks from where Nigel Cobb inserted all those screws and uh, pins which hold his uh, fragile legs together Barry Sheen absolutely sensationally determined and uh, you saw him when I was talking to him early in the pits and there is Barry there is number seven Barry on his Suzuki that bike about uh, 40 pounds heavier than the factory bikes and he has been followed by uh, Sergio Palandini on a Suzuki They're both similar bikes in fact and you see Barry move his way to cross I think Barry was determined to uh, conserve his stamina. Peter, how do you think Barry's riding? Well, he's obviously got to be careful not to crash because he cannot afford to damage those legs again so quickly, so he's got to ride conservatively, but for a man in his condition, he's putting on a tremendous performance there, sliding with casual ease off the side of the motorcycle, getting it well down on the in the turn before a sharp acceleration there to keep himself ahead of Pellandini. He'll be conserving his energy and hoping to make up ground towards the end of the race as the other, the other riders will be tiring. Well, this is one third distance, and you see Barry Sheen having a good battle They call him by Bionic Barry, and well, they should. Barry, the man who's so adept at uh, riding a helicopter, <laughs> riding a helicopter, flying a helicopter. But there is fast Freddie Spencer, and he's got a bit of a twitch on. Freddie Spencer well out in the lead, and he is obviously not hanging about at all. He will have been told by his pit crew that he's got about four seconds. Uh, maybe the rear tire is starting to uh, 
heat up a little bit and make it a little bit uh, twitchy. Fast Freddy comes up from under the bubble. And just look at that lead. Kenny Roberts on the offensive. Kenny Roberts chasing Fast Freddy. And the World Championship this year could be all about these two men. And it could also be about Barry Sheen too because he is now up to 11th place. The end of lap 10, Barry was uh, the fighting 11th. And looks as if he's going to get into the frame. Through the S's. There is King Kenny. Sweeps up towards West Bank. Motorcycle gets a bit of a wobble on. And now onto the main straight. This is a very important a corner to come out of quickly. Peter, let's follow Kenny round. Tell us how you ride the circuit. Well, Kenny's now up, changing up through the gears. You just saw his arm flick out as he changed again. Though he's up into sixth gear now. The motorcycle accelerating up to 180 miles an hour over the top of the brow, gaining revs up to maximum revs of about 12,000 RPM as he sits waiting for the braking point to arrive. Sits up, his body acting as a parachute, grabbing the front brakes down shifting down to fourth gear down to second gear for this 70 mile an hour corner and then accelerating changing up again through the gears through this very very fast 110 mile an hour barbecue bend sweep the bike sliding out as he tries to hold it to the inside to make the very important flick over and then up through the 130 mile an hour yuxke sweep in fourth changing to fifth gear holding it in, in fifth all the way under the braking for the 90 mile an hour sunset bend Again, it's a late apex bend, the bike sliding all the way through the corner. A short burst of acceleration down to fourth corner here, into second gear, missing the bumps there on the outside of the circuit, laying over a tremendous angle here, all using all the road up into the curb, another burst of acceleration, and then the very tricky S's with the off camber here. You cannot let the bike slide out on the first left-hander, and there's no room on the right-hander either because there's a barrier right on the outside of the track. He's braking now, turning down for the last corner, the second gear, 50 mile an hour accelerating to 70 mile an hour on the exit west bank corner and back onto the straight accelerating once more through the gears well there you have a very fast lap with peter clifford of the kyle army sack and i bet peter wishes he could race around here as quick as kenny roberts chris guy the uh, young devon rider uh, on the fabergé suzuki he's unfortunately coming to the pits there is freddie spencer number three in the lead pulled away from king kenny roberts Kenny on the charge though and then we have the Hondas third position Ron Haslam fourth position Takazumi Katayama fifth position Randy Momola moved up to sixth now is Mark Fontan on the third of the uh, three B4 Yamahas in this race Marco Lucanelli the uh, world champion from two years ago on the uh, fourth of the Hondas he's back in eighth place behind the private machine of Raymond Roche Randy Mamola going through the picture. Randy Mamola with the Takazumi tacked on behind. These Suzuki's very small. The main development in motorcycle racing in recent years has been a reduction in frontal area and size. They're uh, nearly all running now on 16-inch uh, on front wheels. 12 laps have been completed. This is the 13th. Eddie Lawson, who made that uh, slow start from second position on the grid, has now got into the top 10 frame. Eddie Lawson in 10th place in his very first 500 Grand Prix although the fans will know he did do a couple of years ago three 250 Grand Prix in Europe but uh, a four times American champion Eddie Lawson we don't see him in the picture here we do see number nine Ron Haslam tucked under the bubble number six Randy Mamola from Santa Clara California and behind Randy Mamola the Japanese but Korean born rider Takazumi Katayama the former 350 cc world champion and a man who put so much effort into developing these bikes and Takazumi is going to try down the inside and indeed outbreaks Randy Mamola. Freddie Spencer making this race look a little bit easy. We're approaching half distance and we're wondering if Kenny is going to make a charge or as Peter suggested his engine is perhaps starting to overheat. And let's look at that action. Look at Randy trying to go around. And indeed he does it. What a sensational move. Well, Randy Mamola, since he, we saw him first, has been uh, a very spectacular rider we do have an accident on the course as you can see the ambulance we have not any information about who the rider is but there is an ambulance on the course white flags are being waved that will make uh, business a little bit tricky if we have any information we'll bring it to you there is randy momola on the hb suzuki they have three factory suzukis in this race 
Randy Momola, Franco Uncini and Loris Reggiani, whose bike is slightly different to the other two, and is prepared by the tuner Roberto Galina. But there is Ron holding off Randy, holding off Takazumi. Peter Clifford, is this how you expected the race to go? Did you think that uh, Freddie would run away with it? Well, the practice times didn't indicate that he would get just this much of a lead so early on, but of course the man who was second in practice, Eddie Lawson, had a terrible start, so that um, explains why Freddie's been able to get away. Now, Randy's doing a superb job on the work Suzuki here because they had bad handling problems in practice. Franco and Cheney told me this morning, that's Randy's teammate, that uh, the rear suspension was giving them all kinds of trouble and they just couldn't get the power to the road. They've made some guesses to the suspension settings for the race and it looks as though they may have guessed right on Randy's machine because he is making up ground. Into the last four laps of this South African Grand Prix and what a cracker it has been. Ron Haslam doing it all for Britain. In third place, there is the number eight, Takazumi Katayama. Takazumi, the Japanese, who does uh, some physical jerks on the grid just before he climbs on his bike. Looks a bit like a samurai warrior. No, Mark Fontan still shadowing Ron Haslam. Ron hasn't shaken him off yet. Meanwhile, Freddie Spencer still pouring on the power. Well ahead of Kenny Rollis. Something of a walkaway win for Freddie Spencer. We didn't expect that, but at least we've got the bonus here of a tremendous battle with Ron Haslam and Mark Fontan. And that battle still rages. Ron Haslam has got no time to relax. And I wonder if uh, through the S's Mark's going to try that same trick again that's worked a couple of times before. Ron will be expecting it now. And a slower rider might mess it up a little bit. Oh, and there's a rider down. That is one of the Hondas. It's Takazumi Katayama who's crashed his Honda. He uh, looks okay, the bike's being wheeled away. Takazumi's being helped out. Poor old Takazumi, he, having a desperately hard ride in fourth place, just tried too hard and slung the machine away. But uh, Honda's still out in front with Freddie Spencer. Freddie riding cool, calm and collected. Number three there. Number three just about to pick up a couple of back markers, but he's having no trouble. He seems to have a lot of time in hand as he just waits for the right position. Takes an easy line past the back marker there, making, taking no chances. We'll watch Freddie use his skill to pick off the next man in front of him. Wait for the safe uh, opportunity. There's no need to hurry. He's got a tremendous lead over the second place man, Kenny Roberts, and the third place men, Ron Haslam and Mark Fontan. Well, that crash we saw with Takazumi Katayama has, of course, put Barry Sheen into the points. Barry Sheen is now 10th, one point at least. Uh, that'll make him very happy indeed. And now we are in the closing stages. And Freddie Spencer, Kenny Roberts is second, Ron Haslam is third, Mark Fanton is fourth, now Randy Mamola is fifth, Franco and Chini is sixth, Eddie Lawson has come all the way up to seventh place after his slow start, and Raymond Rush is eighth, and Barry Sheen, remind you, is tenth. Oh, and there's a rider getting his legs down and still staying on. Unbelievably, this is lap number 28. There is Freddie Spencer about to complete lap 28 and go on to his penultimate lap. Looking for his third Grand Prix win of his short but spectacular career. Freddie Spencer. There is Freddie now on to his penultimate lap. Bike wobbling a little bit. the back end vibrating just look at those twin exhausts two of the four two of the three exhausts that this bike has vibrating like mad freddie spencer on the last but one lap on our lap chart second is kenny roberts kenny isn't going to catch him now third is mark fontan fourth is ron has fifth is randy romola and what is now going through freddie spencer's young brain starting to hear all the strange noises that might just put him out in the, the last final gasps of this race Freddie has lost a race he lost the German Grand Prix last year on well the very last corner and uh, he had a little bit of a collision and Randy Mamola came through to win so Freddie will be remembering that 
remembering you can throw a race in the closing stages. And there is Kenny Roberts. That's the gap. Kenny Roberts has ridden hard for second place. Now, Freddie comes across the line. There is Freddie going on to the very last lap of this race. Well, Freddie Spencer has written an absolute copybook for this race, hasn't he, Peter? He has indeed. He's never put a foot wrong. He took the lead early on so that he didn't get um, caught up in any early race squabbles. And he's now out on his last lap. He takes a very slow last lap um, so as to not make any mistakes. That's uh, one of his tactics. So I can't imagine to see Freddie put a foot wrong here. He's just curving through the bends on his way to his third Grand Prix win with ease. So Freddie Spencer it is. Looks as if he's going to win the National South African Grand Prix. Kenny Roberts is second, a great ride from Ron Hazard in third place, battling for much of the way with Mark Fontana of France. Fifth was Randy Bomola on the HP Suzuki. Sixth, Franco and Chini his teammate. Seventh, Raymond Roche. Eighth, Eddie Lawson and Barry Sheen in tenth place. And Gary Lingham having a good ride too. Well, there, Freddie just takes the back marker through the S's for the very last time. And they will pour on the power up towards West Bank, Leocop corner. Round it very safely indeed. Now all there is is that run down to the straight. He could almost coast home now. Still tucks under the bubble. Fast Freddie Spencer coming towards the line. Takes the kink for the last time. Still winds on the power and there's the checkered flag. Fast Freddie Spencer has won the South African Grand Prix. We are still waiting for Kenny Roberts to come home second. And a brilliant third place it looks as if it's going to be for Ron Haslam. There is Freddie waving to his fans. Mike Reed, Clark of the course, gives the chequered flag. And there is Freddie. Ron Haslam third. Mark Fontana third. Randy Lamola just coming home fifth. Franco and Chini in sixth place. Raymond Ross seventh. Eight Freddie Lawson and Barry Sheen in his comeback ride gets a world championship point. Tenth. A fine display from brave Barry. Well done, Barry. And well done, Freddie Spencer. And well done, Ron Hassan. You really put on a super display for us. Freddie just signaled to a couple of the riders that he had lapped. South African fans really love this display. And a little wheelie. A little wheelie full of joy. There you see uh, Kenny Roberts. Kenny pats Freddie on the back. Congratulations. Kenny actually goes in front of him on the Marbury other half. There you see the final lineup. Spencer Roberts, Haslam, Bontan, Mamola, and Tini.